Hello. What's up, everybody? We are about to dive in here. First set here for the Bonanno Open Classic. Torga 73 versus Bird Fan. Should be a ton of fun. Jabari's going to join us in just a second. But 300 followers. Oh, nice, nice. 300 followers. Thank you, Narwhal5. You're number 300. Appreciate it, my friend. Uh, exciting times, man. I'm looking forward to this. This has been quite a while in the making now. Well, that's good. Are you guys uh, hearing him all right? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, yo, yeah, you hear him, yo, yo, dude? Is the audio level okay? What's up, Torga? 73 is here for the cast. You guys hear Jabari okay? Anybody? Jabari, do some talking, please. All right, they're not hearing you. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. Something's happened. I sound good. Thank you. Uh, just need to adjust the audio here. Because for some reason, it wanted to uh, give me problems today. Because why else would it, you know? All right. Speak, sir. Hello. Okay, that was loud as hell. <laughs> but they hear you for sure. Cool. I'll, I'll move the mic a little away. No, it's on me. I got it. I got it. It's all good. All right. Everybody can hear Jabari now, yes? Hello. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, yo, dude. All right. We'll get this thing started now that the audio bug is uh, solved. Weasel with the subscription. Thank you, sir. It's been a good four months. He sounds funny. How does he sound funny? Mm. Um, I'm talking now just so people can hear. I mean, I hear it fine on my end, personally. Maybe and I think we, we can assume it's good enough to cast, probably. I believe so. <laughs> it's good. Okay. It's all good. It's all good, apparently. All right. So, Torga versus Birdfan... Jabari, you remember what ELO they are? Yes, this is actually uh, going to be the greatest ELO discrepancy across all brackets. Bird fan is like 550, and Torgo is uh, in the 1100s. Well, huge shout outs to both you guys for participating. Uh, we are going to move over to the Civ draft here, and we do have it here for you. Torgo is going to have a random selection with the Tatars, which is hilarious, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. And then he's got Mayans, Poles, and Vietnamese. Birdfan has chosen Vikings, Aztecs, Ethiopians, and Saracens. So really looking forward to seeing how this all works out. Uh, so no bands, Jabari. How, how are you liking it so far? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm loving it. The whole idea of no bands is to like let players practice any Civ on any map and actually have a high probability of getting to play it. Um, yeah, if you can like figure out an abusive strategy, I would like to see that in action, actually, probably more often than not. So, well, and it rewards those who prepare, right? So, yes. can't go wrong. But we're going to dive into game number one here. And it should be a lot of fun. Sorry, there was an unexpected time cap on the draft. Well, <laughs> you'll be prepared next time. I am at five seconds in game one. Me too. All right. Three, two, one, go. Torgo versus Birdfan, game number one. And actually, I'm not good because I paused it on the other side. No. Hold on. I have to unpause. Hopefully, it doesn't go crazy. Or it will. Procaster, by the way, right? <laughs> All right. I'm at eight seconds. Where are you at? That's 25 seconds. All right, I will catch up. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. 
All right, game number one, Torga73 versus Birdfan. And it's going to be Vikings for Birdfan, and Torgo is going to go with the Mayans. A very interesting Civ matchup here. What do you think about this one? Um, I personally prefer the Mayans here. I mean, I'd assume both players are just going to go full archers. Um, and yeah, I'm watching Birdman or Birdfan with great interest given his elo. And his opening is a uh, very unusual he's going to wood before food yeah yes yes the low elo legend himself bird fan is here today uh and i think uh, maybe he'll learn a few things watching these games potentially throughout the tournament uh but you know at least they weren't idle he, he did do he did use them they were active tco times not bad viking eco is going to help him out every time he goes up in age he is at least using his scout as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, when he signed up, I commented that it was pretty brave of him. Um, I guess he might have uh, not expected that low elo meant up to 1,200, which is, like, including players with, like, as much as, like, a 1,000 hours of experience. So, um, yeah, he's definitely in for a challenge here. <laughs> for sure. But you know what? He's doing good now. He's got himself figured out. He's going to be Strike the Tree legend over here. But... He's getting his Zico set up all right here. I can't complain for his Zico, yeah, honestly. I actually, I actually love his first two houses as well. It's a start up a nice wall off. <laughs> yeah, and this map is a very interesting one. Torgo's got two golds. Uh, pretty safe back here behind wood lines. Very awkward generation for him with his hunt there. Uh, and then he's got a nice little easy wall up. Nothing too crazy here. But be really interesting to see how this one plays out Torgo with the better map in my opinion obviously golds being so close and easily protected at that point main gold for bird fan not quite as good but still will be uh, viable to be safe so berries forward though Torgo's map definitely a better gen here so you really think Mayans are still preferred over vikings here huh um well i mean i guess i almost always go archers myself on arabia and uh i guess my personal uh like pick order would be probably like britons bohemians vietnamese mayans and like vikings are kind of way at the bottom i don't know uh i mean i guess the thing that's best about them are the eco bonuses but i kind of uh, prefer anything that makes the army fight better over that personally interesting i mean honestly i think the vikings just got buffed i don't think it was a nerf to lose thumb ring honestly so i still f would favor the vikings as a civ overall but lions obviously uh, extremely viable it's just gonna be interesting to see how these two duke it out here in game one yeah i mean uh bird fan is uh holding it together still uh, besides the tc idle time he's looking pretty uh pretty reasonable yeah, he's uh, getting a lumber camp down, so he's not going to be full straggler tree mode and uh, taking his sheep pretty religiously. Uh, yet to get up the boars, but I mean, honestly, if I had to guess someone's elo, uh, I don't know if I'd guess his elo to be as low as it is, to be honest. Well, I mean, if you if you look at the bill count, um, I think that does kind of tell it all. True, very true. Taking sheep religiously, yes. Yes, that's the, the, the wording I chose, Deck Chariot. <laughs> Can't say that well, about uh, Saracens. <laughs> Fair enough. I will, and one thing I did really like about the previous tournament you hosted is that you cast every single game, uh, like playing pretty much every other tournament on the mid-ELO circuit. None of them do that. And um, like a, as a player, the experience is so much more intense knowing that like you know maybe a hundred people across like all recordings and everything are going to end up watching your game yeah i mean if you're going to spend your time to play in the tournament i'm going to at least spend my time to cast it for you so i mean the first round is the tournament is always the most interesting given the uh elo discrepancies usually here or there but cannot complain uh too much about that uh Jabari sounds far away to you guys. Uh, I can't really yeah, do I, anything I, for you there, guys. I, I'll move the mic closer. Okay. 
Um, so bird fan getting housed here. He's also uh, being idled by this furious of the monkey here. Uh, Vil taken out here, but he'll bring that kid's monkey and should be able to clean this up. Although his Vil's quite idle now. Whoa, Torgo with double mill here. Very interesting build for sure. Uh, e love both players. Uh, Jabari can explain this one for you again. Yeah, uh, Bird Fan is an outlier, lowest Elo entry. Um, I think he was probably below 500 when he played this, but um, I just checked today. He's like 550. Um, his ranked history shows that he can definitely beat 800 players in his best days. So, um, yeah, and his opponent here, <clears throat> Torgo, is like 1150. So. A bit of a mismatch, probably the biggest ELO discrepancy we'll see across all brackets. Yeah, well, Bird Fan's my new favorite player because he has the balls <laughs> to enter this tournament knowing he's going to be at an ELO disadvantage. So, uh, you know, gotta love it. You love Birdman? It's Bird Fan. I've probably said Birdman like 12 <laughs> times already, but. <laughs> Pretty Birdman good monkey though. micro to dodge the TC there, too. Yeah, I mean. It's uh looking to be a. Is this gonna be man at arms here, or is what is Torgo going for here? It's such a weird build for him with two mills. <clears throat> and it looks like in the end he stabilized at like you know six ish vills behind. Oh wait, he's still dark age. He's actually actually further behind than I thought. For sure. Bird fans part of the Vir your clan. I can never pronounce that. I don't even want to try. But that's awesome. Tell him if he wants, we'll give him some free coaching lessons. Help him get his elo up a little higher. And then we'll go stonks in your community games again. Unconventional uh, mill lures here with the boar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, to his credit though, he's taking the boar. This is uh, very good. I haven't watched Low Elo Legends in a while. Maybe the level of play has come up. But I've seen a lot of players not take the boar at all. So it's always a big plus here. And on the other side here, Torgo's going straight into archers. Birdfin was chill as hell in the game chat. Nice, nice. Yeah, the, the economy buildings here are very interesting. Double lumber camp, double mining camp, dumber, double mill, all on one screen for Torgo. Uh, we'll see how that works out for him. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. I mean, if I had to call it, uh, Torgo is going to probably uh, keep up pretty good production and hit with a devastating mass of archers. And I would be impressed if Bird Fan is able to put up much of a fight, given he's just clicking up now. For sure, for sure. Uh, but he's uh, just needs to work on some TC idle time and his eco balance here, and he could definitely gain some elo points on the ladder, no question. It's gonna be uh, double archery range here for Torgo. Torgo, double everything pretty much, just multiple houses, only one TC, but still lacking horse yeah. collar. I didn't give any consideration to it, but I wonder, would it be possibly worthwhile to have, like, a less than 800 division for future tournaments? Like, uh, are players at this level competitive at all? Um, or... I think that question's being answered right now. We're looking at a, <laughs> we're looking at a 16-something minute feudal play. Um, he really likes the monkey. Nice, nice. Uh, but I, I love when people sign up for these things because they're not afraid and they're just trying to have some fun and we could potentially do a little bracket that low. I think the hard part would be to get enough people. I don't know how many of those people follow the scene and know what's going on or where to look for tournaments. Yeah, Clearly there I, are I think... some, but... I think that some of them would also get very serious and probably like break out and like actually compete like at an 1100 or 1200 elo by the end of things. Yeah, could absolutely be interesting. And honestly, I mean, he's for did you say 400 or 500 elo? 
he was he was in the 400s when he registered uh this morning he was around like 540 i think yeah i mean that's 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 not bad i mean i feel like i expected the level of play to be a lot worse at that elo than it currently is here but nonetheless these archers for torgo who will soon be in castle age are about to uh secure the victory here i don't even think it's a question torgo being uh very very slow to kill these bills but there he is going to take him out now but all in all i mean <clears throat> he is using a lot of different res right now going to be clicking up farming coming down here lots of farms here for torgo behind this economy is pretty smooth he's starting to get some walls up something that i'd expect from about 1100 to 1200 you know yeah I mean, yeah, and to be real here, the game is over, but I am still intrigued to see how the struggle plays out. Um, yeah, Orgo I mean, is a respectfully slaughtering him right now. Yeah, I mean, with this discrepancy, there's only so much you can do. Supplies came in. I'm being told in chat. I did not see it, but uh, man-at-arms and then some militia behind this, so maybe he needs to... Work on a few different things here for Bird Fan, but again, just having the bravery to come and sign up for the tournament when you know you're going to be at a disadvantage elo wise, because we spoke to him about it. And, you know, my new favorite player, I'm going to watch this guy's career now. He's going to be on my. I'm going to follow him on AoE2.net. Yeah, no, definitely has my respect as well. Yeah, and Torgo, I mean, honestly, we're looking at this build right now, and I don't know if Torgo's just trying to take it nice and relaxed here. Torgo's in chat, maybe he can give us some insight, but I feel like with this uh, timing for Castle Age, it's a bit slow. <laughs> um, I mean, give, given the score and everything that's happened, I doubt that he's uh, sweating very hard right now. Of course. I, I do appreciate that he, he's not putting on the brakes at all. He's... He's finishing this. He's playing it like a tournament. Of course. I'm just speculating because 22 minutes and some change for Castle Age. Uh, I don't know what the ELO times... What What do you think Castle Age is on average for these ELO players? I actually don't play with the clock. Um, really? But Interesting. Yeah, 40, 42 is a lot of bills, I'll say. That's true. You don't play with the clock. That sounds like insanity to me. I love having the clock there, personally. Uh, Vil count is a pretty good proxy for it, I think. No, for sure. I like to look at both, though. It's probably one of the reasons I don't do so well. Castle Age comes in. These uh, archers will soon be crossbows. And with Bot Canero, he'll outrange even the town center. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we see a defeat, not a resignation here. That would be something. Kind of looks like what's coming. <laughs> I mean, he's uh, getting all of his upgrades. He's got one vill forward here. I don't know if he's actually planning on sending that out or not, but more vills going to go down here. <laughs> Thumb ring Botkin in. The man at arms have been released from the barracks, but I don't think they'll do too much. Yeah, it does remind me a bit of how I used to play, you know, like just massing 40 longbows and having absolutely no perspective of how dead I was to, like, the player who can produce continuous paladins, you know? For sure. I mean, it's uh, a huge learning process is all that it is, really, and it takes a while to get there, but once you figure out some things, you can move up the ladder pretty quickly, and that's what I think we're going to see from Birdfan here, who's clearly motivated enough to play in a tournament of this elo level knowing he's going to be on the back foot and he's still giving it his all here yep. and torgo's really not giving him an inch here um even if he does play it out to the defeat i feel like torgo's gonna close it out the next few minutes yeah, I mean, defeat is not all that far off at the moment. There's uh, five on food, so he can't produce a whole lot more vills. Uh, he keeps making man-at-arms and villagers at this point. 
obviously still in the feudal age. And there's a lot of crossbows here. A tower coming forward even from Torgo. And he's just going to go for a ram, actually. And we'll say seeing uh, this ELO play, I don't, I don't ever watch low ELO Legends, but it reminds me of like how much we've all learned that we just don't think about at all when we play this game. Um, you know, like concepts like unit counters, uh, continuous build production, like all sorts of efficiency, yeah, power yeah. spikes. These are all definitely concepts that Bird Fan is uh, peripherally aware of at best, I'd say. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a lot of different things to learn. And, I mean, I don't watch a lot of low elo legend play myself either, but I have tuned into a few of the T90 streams there, and he has a hell of a lot of fun with it. A tower! This is a, a crazy desperation tower now, but... <laughs> it's almost I can... feeling like some weird scenario or campaign play at this point. I can appreciate him building the tower, though. I get He's trying to defend himself, at least. He's got the man-at-arms attacking the ram, even. Ram could even go down here. Yeah, I mean, from some perspective, 13 bills is a lot. You can do a lot with 13 bills. Yeah, that number's crashing quickly, so... I don't think the defeat's all that far off. Yeah, I don't think the bird fan knows about garrisoning, or at least is in the habit of doing it either. Yeah. Very possible. But he seems to have actually saved himself. He's survived this attack. If this was like a real world historical siege or something, uh, his villagers would like definitely be celebrating as some sort of victory here. No, but I love it. He realizes he's done for. He says, oh, GG. I love it. It's spectacular. Uh, Torgo taking game number one here. Uh, big, big shout out to Bird Fan here, though. This is. Uh, a nice thing to notice that you're dead and not drag something out because we've all played against that guy that saves his last villager until the very end so very good very good quick look at the statistics here there's not really much to talk about it's pretty cut and dry what went down here so to pull up the civ draft again here for you Torgo wins with Mayans and Vikings goes down here for Birdfan. Game number two going to be on the home map of Birdfan, which will be on Arena, I believe. Um, is it Tatars versus Ethiopians? <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. Torgo, you're in chat. <laughs> Was it the game against Ethiopians? Sounds good. I will heal you. We'll, yeah. we'll be having more. I will more, heal you. Worry. You can still sign up for the less than 1500 bracket if you're really, uh, really feeling the edge. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Torgo, you in chat still? Can you uh, give me a, a Civ matchup for this next game, please? I have multiples. I mean, it's the... Why, why don't we assume it's Ethiopians and that they followed the Civ pick rules? All right. Did he play Vikings again then, or did you guys restore? Or restart? I have, like, 300 games I'm looking at right now. You gently okay, corrected then. course. Okay. All right, <laughs> we're on the same page then. All right, I am at five seconds whenever you're ready. I will load the replay now. I have the clock visible now. I actually started turning on a few days ago. All right, cool, ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, game number two, Torgo here with Tatars. His random selection, of course, so that makes it even more interesting. Also, I see Ethiopians for bird fans, so he seems to be favoring archer civs. Now, Jabari, you're the arena clown here. You, what can we expect from these civs? Um, Tatars is not a civ I think I've seen once on arena, but I would guess that uh, Torgo will just go cav archers, uh, playing to the civ strength. 
and I would assume Birdfan is going Archers. There's a chance that he's like looking for that late game Torsion engines. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that actually might make more sense than Archers. Uh, for but, sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I anything is possible here. For sure. Uh, Tech Chariot's insulted. I called you the, the clown around here, but Tech Chariot is the arena clown we all know and love with the monk micro, so uh, my apologies, <laughs> Tech Chariot. Yeah. But, uh, Arena's actually hugely popular with pretty much everybody in your Discord. It is, interestingly enough, and no one likes islands, which I love, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so... What uh, civs would you have rather seen here? Like, give me your top, like, five arena civilizations. Well, the tournament has no bans or snipes, so I guess I might as well just say what I like. I like Turks. I like Bohemians. Like, literally, those are the only ones I'd pick. Uh, Koreans are pretty decent as well. Spanish. I guess it depends on what you're going for. Um, I pretty much will only ever do... I I'm just really telling all. I'm just opening myself up for my opponents, but there's only nine viewers. I'll pretty much only ever do monks or unique unit builds on Arena, unless it's like random Civ. So that uh, narrows the Civs that I even think about quite a bit. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. I mean, there you've named a lot of Civs that I can associate the strategies with. Mm, um, I mean, I, I know for the pro level, like Malay, Teutons, Britons are considered top tier. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different options. I mean, even civs that you don't consider to be top tier on open maps are top tier on arena maps. I mean, Turks is not a civ that for a long time people even wanted to play. Uh, personally, I enjoy playing them on arena, but I don't play arena often, so <laughs> take that for what it's worth. But I can also play, you know, Burmese on closed maps like this. There's, you know, the double castle Arambi builds. Lots of interesting things that you can do with civs that you don't generally see a ton of. So that is really nice to see. And uh, this map pool that you, we've come up with here is very diverse. Yeah, think... I'm extremely happy with the map pool which I chose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very glad to have Arena in it. I mean, like, the strats that are viable on Arena are so different than the other maps. Um and yeah, I, I think the map pool we have shows off the whole strategic range of the game. Um, like there might be a couple maps that could be classified as traditional open maps, a couple maps you could play as water maps, a couple maps you could play as closed maps, but um, people are going to have to practice their maps, I think, for this one. Yeah, I mean, and it's going to be a lot of fun because a lot of people are they're getting used to like more traditional maps like what we have in this tournament if they've been around for a long time like the the rain the, the i cannot talk the nomad start is very old school compared to what you see in present day so players will have to adjust and if they're not ready for it uh it can be very interesting having to put that lumber camp down first not something that you're really prepared for right away yeah, that definitely uh, changes the flow of the game to uh, to build a lumber camp rather than just immediately slamming a TC. For sure. I think it's actually like, I think it definitely like adds more variety and strategy to the game. It's just the pace of it is slow if the first three minutes are just spent chopping wood. Yeah, uh, it's, it was very fun. I know Tech Chair and I had a good time with it. Uh, both of us were not expecting it, and I had loaded the map up like five times previously just to look at it. But never actually considered the, how much I could, had in the bank for res. So when I was playing, it was like, oh, crap. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a good game. Um, and it makes for an interesting game, too, because you can drop that lumber camp, use some sheep for scouting, and maybe know where your opponent is about. And uh, very unique start, for sure. I'm also pretty pumped that we have a black forest in the map pool. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I don't think I've ever seen that in a competitive 1v1 tournament map back ever. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm not that excited that it's in the map pool. <laughs> 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 because those games could go on forever. But uh, same with Arena, really. Arena can go on forever, but you usually don't see it last that long. So 
that's a big plus. But Black Forest, if one somebody wants to wall and just sit there and survive, it's definitely possible. But I think it will be interesting to see how that develops over the course of the tournament here for sure. Uh, yeah, all mean, game it... ones, round one games have not been played yet, but we have a few potential admin wins. It just the first round is uh, always a question mark. Don't know how committed people actually are, especially in lower elo tournaments. So, not exactly I, sure if we have one I, in the first round, but yeah, we'll see. I message the players, and I think that the there's only four matches to be played in the first round, and I think two of the remaining ones are scheduled to be played tomorrow. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, we know what we're gonna see tomorrow night, then, gentlemen. Should be uh, two sets tomorrow night. The nice thing I like about what you've done here with this map pool being very, very interesting with some uh, fun maps, some classic maps, some open maps, is the fact that we're not going to have any bans, like you were alluding to earlier. No bans, so you can actually go for planned strategies, assuming your opponent doesn't pick that sieve first. So it's going to be uh, something to really pay attention to as the tournament develops, because players who are advancing will hopefully be scouting their opponents and be able to see what their opponents are going for. There could be some really fun mind games a part of that, especially as we get into the higher elo brackets. Yeah, I'm, I agree. Castle Age should be coming in here pretty soon. There's a click for Torga. Uh, Birdfan on his way to Feudal at the moment. And... We'll see what he's got in him this time. Ethiopians, you would expect archers. Most generally. I, I, get, I, I get the vibe that Torgo knew what's up with uh, how heavily he's favorited at this point, and I'm hoping that he might give Birdfan a chance to put some army together. Um... Yeah, just boom up and let, let there be a big fight at some point. Um, well, I mean, he doesn't look like he's uh, going in for the fast kill necessarily. <laughs> oh, Torga in chat, I love it. I'm, I'm, I was giving him heck about the random pick for Shatars, and now it's a plan. Mind games, he says. <laughs> uh, this is entertaining. Uh, you know, but it's, uh, you know, once you get up to a certain point in the tournament, I mean, it may even be the next round, the second round of the tournament, third round of the tournament, just depends. Uh, players that you're going to go up against are probably going to be stalking your profile, checking out what you've been playing where, and trying to figure out what they can expect. I know I've done it before, and I've tried to counterpick my opponent that way, and it can be a lot of fun. It doesn't always work out, but if you know someone's going to pick Franks and you're almost certain of it, it's going to be Franks on Arena or Arabia, that you can go... Indians, if you so choose, and you know, some things to pay attention to. Targo, not going to be so kind, it doesn't look like, though. So. We yeah, are... I guess it is, <laughs> it is kind of the respectful thing to do to just play it as you would against any other tournament opponent. <laughs> exactly. What do you mean we're too much? I will heal you. You have to explain. <laughs> uh, we will be archers from Tatars. So that will be a lot of fun to see what happens here. Mind games, indeed, I will heal you. We, we take this very seriously around here. We, we, we just meme all day long, right, Jabari? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I get really into tournaments. I scout my opponents hard. And, like, a few times I've been paired with someone who's, like, 200 elo more than me. And uh, I always really try to win those. Um, I have yet to win one of those. But, uh, yeah, I, I love tournaments, scouting the opponents, uh, you know, making the drafts and civ picks, like, as important strategic decisions as anything you do in-game. Yeah, a lot of fun. It, it really adds to it, too, because, like you said, if you're down 200 elo to someone, there's a good chance you're not going to be going to the next round, but you want to give them a run for their money, maybe come out with, like, some hard-hitting strats with Kelt Hoang rushes or all-in feudal cumins or anything, you know, could be 
a ton of fun. Oh, Torgo. You would not do that, Torgo. Torgo's in chat. He's talking about memes. He says, keep an eye on that Siege <laughs> Workshop. So, Siege Tower is incoming, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that that may be justified as cruel and unusual punishment here. Oh, no. Bird fan, I haven't looked at your base in a while. I thought this was a Polish sieve for a second, because his farms are all around the mill. Bird fan, you can farm around a mill. Or a town center, good sir. Hey, yep, there's the siege tower. Yeah, I mean, uh, the siege tower, The these are definitely things that he would never see at the 500 elo. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of this, you know, this for bird fan, this must be like, you know, if we were to get paired against a 2K player. Um, I mean... <laughs> yeah, no, 100% agree. I mean... I love what he's doing here, though. He's giving it his all, trying to do what he can. He's going to get infantry upgrades right now, so he is going infantry. He wants to go infantry. Bird fan, no barracks, but getting the blacksmith upgrades, and he's on his way to castle. Pretty reasonable time this time around. Yeah, I mean, and on Arena, a 10 vil difference, you know, I mean, people often win with, like, 50 vils less, but... Here comes the GG attack right here. <laughs> very true, very true. We also have uh, a beautiful outpost in the corner here. I don't know if tower jumping the corner is still possible, but still. Oh, bird fan, I love it. He's just like, oh, I'm surprised. Oh, poor bird fan. Nice garrison. Yeah, he's, Not... uh, is that a town bell or was it actually a garrison? <laughs> uh, I have no game sound, but I would guess it was a town bell. Yeah, I think I think it might have been because a lot of things came in there. But you know, he's damage controlling this pretty well. Actually, he hasn't lost a single vill yet. Though That's... the monkey might not be so lucky. Yeah. Tower defense. Hmm. And you know what? If he stays under this town center, he should garrison the town center right now. Now, it's, yeah, Batorgo is going to move out of the range of that one, unfortunately for him. Hmm. Well, looking forward to the future rounds, Torgo is not going to have an easy path. Uh, like this quote unquote low elo bracket, there's like, you know, a good half a dozen players in it who have like spiked nearly 1300 at some point. Um, yeah, it's definitely, and... it's definitely got a very interesting amount of people all around the same range right now. But like you said, they've all peaked at different points. And they all have different number of games. It's going to be really interesting to see how it progresses throughout. And I expect once we get to the end of the tournament here that players will actually be peaking that 1300 area again. Oh, yeah. Vill fighting. <laughs> He's going to actually kill crossbows with Vills. Ooh, you got to command queue this. You can actually have him move on to the next one immediately after killing the previous. But this is actually decent build fight, Micro. Huh? No giving up. He's going to keep going. I love it. Oof. But just look at that population. Yeah, nothing like hand cart coming in at the same time. <laughs> uh, but Bird Fan, I mean, he does have all of his eco upgrades. He did get military upgrades. He's got a decent idea of what he's going to do here. And honestly, I'd love to see him matched up against someone in the future. Right into the same elo. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pay attention to this guy moving forward. And uh, hopefully we'll see him in more things down the road. And we'll be like, I've watched this guy when he was 400 elo. 500 elo. Yeah, I, I think that Torgo didn't do him a favor suggesting Ethiopians is a similar sim to Vikings. Because it sure seems like the reason that Bird Fan likes Vikings is for the uh, infantry line. Well, I think Birdfan just likes infantry. I don't think it's... Uh, is he played him with Vikings? I guess playing with Ethiopian is not terrible, but it's not like there's anything special about it going up against the Archer Civ right now. <laughs> and Torgo is having some trouble. I don't know uh, what's going on with this siege tower, but he's having trouble on garrisoning across the wall right now. 
Yeah, this is this is definitely a town bell. These siege towers. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never used the siege tower once myself. I should probably try it sometime. You, a, an arena clown meme player, never use the siege tower. I guess I got into the habit of petard busting the wall. Uh, so I. I guess yeah. I guess we need to play some some team games on Arena. Uh, I'll go Slav Pocket and make a siege tower. Or you just go full archers, and you'll see how you feel about that one. Uh, Tech Chariot. I only use the Town Bell. Really, Tech Chariot. This is shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Town Bell or bus. <laughs> I feel like that's got to be a limiter on uh, your level of play to not be able to selectively garrison Vils. It just doesn't feel right to hear those words. They're harder than they look. <laughs> Torgo, you just have to, like, sit up against the wall. <laughs> like, set, yeah, it's just set the siege the tower direction. Yep, directly in the right direction, and then hit the on-garrison point across the wall, and you can actually put your Q from your archery ranges to the siege tower, and they'll instantly hop. Yeah, uh, Manga now coming forward because he's disgusted here. He can't get through the walls. But I believe it won't be too long, and we'll have the uh, GG's called again here. As we get to see Torgo, let's see if he can get it done this time. He did garrison. Have you seen uh, survivalists with these uh, siege towers? By any chance? Uh, I never have. I've seen the Viper Micro, though, where he, like, drives the units around. Yeah, Survivalist has been doing that. He's been messing around with builds, and it's very interesting, actually. Um, oh, did he? Nope. Nope. I thought it maybe, but... Torgo. <laughs> Torgo's never going to build a Siege Tower again. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is uh, theoretically viable to just use the Siege Tower as, like, an armored car for slow units. Absolutely. 100%. Torgo just uh, building this city back here in simulation mode at this point and uh, getting mangonels out to kill this ram. Could also attack it with your archers. Would go a little faster, Torgo. A castle! Bird fan. This is a terribly placed castle, but I can respect the fact that he's going to bit one up here. It secures oh, the gold in the wood line. What mod do you have with the mangonels shooting those, like, uh... Like they're like dice weeds? or something. Oh, they're, they're tumbleweeds? <laughs> I don't know. Like, the frickin' uh, event that's going on, I, I've gotten, like, 60 mods, and they just, some of them automatically turned on. I thought I killed them all off, but clearly I have not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, I need to fix that. I actually don't like that. But he's in... Four siege workshop or four siege workshops, five mangonels and a siege tower. Uh, Going to be difficult to uh, survive here. Yeah, looking at his resources, I guess this game is going to imp if you can call it that. <laughs> That's very possible. You know, I can't imagine Bird Fan will GG while the castle's still standing. No, it looks oh. like he's he's going to. Wow. Okay. But. Bird fan, I appreciate the willingness, the bravery, the balls to join this tournament and uh, really give it your all here. Oh, he has long swords. Wait a minute, it's not over. The the vills will go down. <laughs> use use the long swords. There's six mangonels here. His long swords are garrisoned in the town center. No. He had a moment. Could have killed them all. Oh, we have some uh, friendly fire, but... He's getting on the board with the KD. Maybe. Slightly. <laughs> 31-9 KD for Torgo. Kind of what we expect here. Um, and he's just going to come at him with his last bills, and then I imagine the GG will come in here. He fought hard. I, I don't think I've ever seen a tournament game like this before. 
One hundred percent. And you know, first tournament, bird fan. I thank you. It was great to have you along for the ride. Sorry, your fortunes uh, were not favorable here in this situation. But GG's. Hope you had fun, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get we'll get you some improvement. We'll we'll get you some free some free lessons should you desire it. Tech Chariot will get right on that, right, Tech? Yep, GG's well played, guys. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody signing up for the tournament as well. Um, yeah, ever since the previous tournament ended, I was actually waiting for your channel to host the next tournament, so uh, I'm glad that I could help to make it happen. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I always want to do more tournaments. It's just a lot of time. So uh, we were actually planning a tournament for around this time of year and then you came to me with all of this and so we did yours first so lots of games to come guys we're gonna pull up the bracket here um in a second i don't i'm not logged into it but i can show you the bracket here it is sorry about the ads but we will see bird fan eliminated here torg Torgo73 will move on. He'll be going on to face Sweet Common. Oh, boy. The Tar boys are back at it again. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Sweet Common, but he was in our last Low Elo Legends bracket, and uh, it was a good time. Good time. Looking forward to this. We have uh, Striker and Tout Kammer, TYS11, Sean PM. Totem and Stealthy Space 7 all set to play by what's the deadline's tomorrow, is it not? Um, we said it was tomorrow. If anybody really needs a couple extra days, I think that we should generally let them have it, especially uh you know, with this being Thanksgiving weekend, I can like mm -hmm. understand if somebody genuinely couldn't play. But Absolutely. yeah, let's let's say let's say Sunday. Sunday is the official date we would like them to be played by. Absolutely. And no problem. We're happy to cast him, Torgo. Looking forward to seeing you continue. And we'll have the bracket updated here. I need to log into the thing. Um, you could play tomorrow if the tournament isn't if needed. I uh, appreciate it, I will heal you, but I think everyone's actually committed to play. I don't think we have any admin wins currently. The one that I was thinking of, we had a bit of an issue here with uh, Hothair and Alcog, uh, but... They thought they had to play this week, but they don't have to play till next. So I think they should be able to get their games in. Yeah. Should not be an issue. I think we need to message them too because they're mistaken about who they're playing. It's possible that they uh, like contacted each other before the bracket got shuffled. Because oh I think yeah. It was Gath, uh, who uh, he thought he was playing. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they did not look at the updated bracket. So yeah, I'll message them about that too while we're at it. But guys, unfortunately, that's going to be it for the stream today. Sadly, uh, for this uh, tournament, we only have the one game tonight. We should have two sets tomorrow, hopefully. Fingers crossed they get those games done and we can go into that tomorrow evening around 9 p.m. as well. Don't know. Potentially, Jabari will be with me again. But we shall see. Yep. Uh, thanks for uh, having me, Juicy. It's my first ever cast. <laughs> first ever cast and your first ever hosted tournament. Who can complain? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to this. Things should just get uh, more hype as the bracket goes on. And the format with like progressive brackets of higher and higher levels, I think, really helps to uh, build the hype and interest. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get through these first couple rounds and then it's going to be really interesting we're going to have a lot to talk about we have like best of fives at the end best of seven i mean who could ask for more right so thank you jabari for everything thank you guys for tuning in tonight tech chariot torgo yo yo dude wahoo uh, i will heal you and uh, everyone else who is around and any closing words jabari uh nah dude thanks uh I'll see you guys around all right, GG's, good luck next, guys, and we'll see you guys again here soon, hopefully tomorrow night, and we'll continue onward, and have a good one, guys. Weasel, I'm sorry. Love you, Weasel. 
Yeah. Please. I'll also plug Yo Yo Dude at this point. He actually beat me in a practice game on Monkey Arena. Dang. Yo Yo Dude for the win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll catch you guys later. Have a good yep. night.